On CTSS, we post thousands and thousands of cases, but some cases seem to be the most popular. So let me take a look at 10 of our most popular cases, and we'll call this part two since we did part one previously. So let's get started. First case, anterior mediastinal mass, solid with some cystic component. It's somewhat eccentric. Differential diagnosis would include lymphoma, theoretically teratoma, but again, you got to say thymoma up there. Thymoma typically is solid and eccentric. Teratoma typically has fat and surely has calcification. Lymphoma is typically solid and not cystic unless treated, and lymphoma also will involve other nodal zones. Again, with thymoma, you kind of see extension to the chest wall. You can see very nicely here that it's pushing by the right hilum, compressing the SVC. Uh, just a really nice example and coming all the way down to the diaphragm. Thymic tumors, you can think of thymolipoma, but those are fat density. You can think of thymic cysts, those are cysts. And then we talk about thymic carcinomas, which can be very aggressive and can look very similar to thymomas. And this was a really good example of a thymoma. Here it is in the coronal display. So again, solid, eccentric, anterior metastinum. Think about thymoma. And just a few more images. Okay, case two, an adrenal hematoma. This is a great case because you see a cystic right adrenal lesion. There's some enhancement in the periphery. What could this be? It could be a complex cyst. It could be a cystic pheochromocytoma. Hematomas, when they present acutely or high attenuation, it can be due to Coumadin, it can be due to trauma, it can be due to underlying tumor. Those are some of the common causes. But if you don't pick up the hematoma acutely, it's going to be of lower CT attenuation. One of the biggest challenges we have are cystic lesions with slight rim enhancement and you're saying, okay, hematoma, but what's the reason for the hematoma? We have seen a bunch, as I mentioned recently, that would do to uh, thymomas, not thymomas. I, we showed you thymoma before. Theochromocytomas that have bled. So again, just a really nice example of a lesion that had bled. And it's one of the most challenging diagnoses when looking at patients with adrenal lesions. Again, as I mentioned, uh, with bleeding of an adrenal due to Coumadin or anticoagulant therapy, it's often bilateral, can be unilateral, but it's smaller. When it's this large, you got to think about underlying process. And again, it could be an adenoma, could be pheo, could be carcinoma, could be metastasis. So a really nice case. And by the way, that was a pheo. Okay, this next case. Look at the patient's right kidney. Look at the calyces. MIP imaging is really good for looking at the calyces. And now you start looking at the calyces very carefully. There's no hydronephrosis, but the closer you look, you see little outpouching from the calyces, particularly toward the lower pole of the kidney. That so-called uh, cup and T appearance, which is seen with papillary necrosis. Papillary necrosis can be unilateral or it can be bilateral. You can see it particularly nicely in the lower pole calyx on the right side. Sort of classic papillary necrosis. Okay, the fourth case. Patient, lots of ascites. You're looking at the bowel. The bowel is distended. When you look carefully at the stomach, it looks like air in the wall of the stomach, gastric emphysema. When you look at the small bowel, there looks like there's air in the wall of the small bowel. And it looks like also there's vascular air. When you look at the small bowel in the left lower quadrant, there's pneumatosis. So now we're dealing with a case with pneumatosis, although subtle, involving small bowel and stomach as well as small caliber vessels, as well as ascites. And this is a good example of ischemia. With ischemia, you look for vessel patency. You can see thrombus in the arteries or even veins. But often you see small caliber vessels like this case, which is a low flow state. Pneumatosis, commonly in small bowel, but also in large bowel, occasionally in stomach and esophagus. 
and air in the hepatic veins or portal veins is also a good sign for bowel infarction. Okay, the fifth case. Cystic lesion tail of pancreas, mildly dilated pancreatic duct. You go through a differential. Could it be an IPMN? I guess so. Could it be a mucinous cystic neoplasm or MCN? Good location. Usually MCNs have no dilated duct. The dilated duct would push you more toward an IPMN. And this lesion is somewhat cystic with a thin septation. You know, it's not that large as in the three centimeter range. Here it is on coronal view. When I start thinking thin septations, I'm thinking MCN, particularly a 40-ish year old female, and this location. One of the things that often is a challenge to us are serous cyst adenomas. Serous cyst adenomas, we talk about septations, we talk about central calcifications, but serous cyst adenomas can also be only cystic with no septations at all. So it's often a challenging diagnosis. It's a serous cyst adenomas of benign lesions. Sometimes they're symptomatic because of size. This was an incidental finding. If he knew for sure this was a serous cyst adenoma, it would be a leave alone lesion. Case six, cystic lesion, solid lesion, head of pancreas with vascularity. When you look at a pancreatic mass like this, there's no dilated ducts, it's solid with some increased vascularity. That changes your differential from an adenocarcinoma, which is the first thing we think about in pancreatic masses in general, to a neuroendocrine tumor. Neuroendocrine tumors can be very vascular or mildly vascular or at times hypovascular. They can be very focused, the 1CM, or can be larger. They can stretch the vessels. They can invade directly into the vessels. Here you see the celiac and SMA are patent, but there's increased vascularity and there's some splaying of the vessels very nicely shown on the coronal view. This was a difficult neuroendocrine tumor because it's so cystic, you might have said, could this be a serous cyst adenoma? Could this be an MCN? But you gotta remember that although we think about neuroendocrine tumors as being very vascular, they're not always very vascular. Okay, case seven. Looking at the kidneys on the coronals, I'm not extremely impressed. Looking at the kidneys on the MIP imaging, I see the renal artery and veins, and I'm not super impressed. What am I missing? We'll look a little bit closer. Symmetric function, the arteries look pretty good. Branching of the left renal artery, nicely seen. Good cortical medullary differentiation. And then, when you look a little bit closer, what's going on in the upper pole of the left kidney and the lower pole of the right kidney. In the lower pole of the right kidney, there's a cystic lesion with a thin septation present. Here it is on the sagittal view. Now you see a lesion with thickened septations, thin septations, very cystic, but you have to worry. A cystic pancreatic lesion with thickened septations or irregular septations is concerning for cystic renal cell carcinoma. Yes, a simple cyst can do that, but that's less common, and you've got to prove you're not dealing with a neoplasm. This would have been a Bosniak 3 in all likelihood. This ended up being a papillary renal cell carcinoma. Okay, what about this case? A body of the pancreas lesion. I showed you the case before that had a dilated duct, this didn't. This is more cystic and solid, thickened septations. What do you get for a lesion in the body of the pancreas with thickened septations, no dilated duct? Then I'm thinking MCN, mucinous cystic neoplasm, particularly middle-aged female. I'm also thinking serous cyst adenoma, but I don't like it for that. IPMN, you'll always see a dilated duct, or almost always, and it'll be kind of large. Papillary uh, spen tumors, papillary tumors, they're a possibility. Younger patient would make it a possibility. But this was an MCN, just a beautiful example of cystic, thickened septations, great location, no dilated duct, sometimes distal glandular atrophy, mucinous cystic neoplasm of the pancreas, very nicely shown. And here's just a few more images. I do make the point that the 3D often will show me the septations better. When the septations get thicker and the lesion gets over four centimeters, that increases the likelihood that the lesion will be malignant. 
And you can see here, thickened septations, increased density. This MCN was indeed early malignant. Here's just a few more images of that. Another case, looking at the bone, the patient has a uh, left total hip, cement by the posterior column on the left, but the patient's osteopenic, but the closer you look at the iliac bones and at the sacrum, it's not just osteopenia, particularly in the sacrum, there are punched out lesions. And that's the appearance of myeloma. Yes, you can say other metastases should be considered, and that's a good point. But when the lesions are so extensive, when the patient looks osteoporotic but has multiple lesions and the patient is older, you got to be thinking about multifocal multiple myeloma. And for the last case today, this patient has extensive ascites. The pattern is more suspicious for carcinomatosis. There's no liver disease. There's nodularity on the omentum. You can see there looks like a mass in the mid-transverse colon. You can see the nodularity in the left upper quadrant, the ascites, the small nodes present. This is a good example of a patient, not just with ascites, but with nodularity and carcinomatosis, which would make someone essentially unresectable. Just a really nice example of carcinomatosis with ascites. Here's just a few more images showing you that, as well as the enlarged periodic nodes, particularly left periodic region, as well as omental nodularity is seen as well. Just a really nice example. So with that, I've showed you 10 cases. I've discussed the 10 cases. And I'll see you on CTSS soon. Have a great day, everybody. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to the CTSS YouTube channel. You can also visit us at ctss.com for even more videos, plus quizzes, pearls, protocols, and oh so much more. We're also in the App Store and have well over a dozen apps for iPhone and iPad, all completely free. Thanks for watching.